Hello everyone, I'm Susan Lee McDonald and welcome back to my show, The Interview. Comedy. Regardless of nationality or age, we all love to laugh. And whether we like slapstick or stand-up comedy, it's so important to make sure that you laugh at some point of the day. Laughter is the best medicine after all. Today's guest is none other than Danny Cho. He's a highly sought after stand-up comedian based in the States, but he's traveling internationally to do some really funny stuff. Now, whether you like him or hate him, you're definitely not going to forget him. So come with me as I interview Danny Cho. A stand-up comedian, writer, and performer, Danny Cho. With his popularity growing in Hollywood, this amazing Korean-American stand-up comedian won a prestigious competition in L.A. and has made multiple appearances on Mad TV on Fox. The web-based series K-Town Cowboys, written by the comedian himself, even won Best First Feature at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival in 2010. An icon of creativity whose golden touch of making people laugh and think, Danny Cho. Hey Danny, thanks so much for being on the interview. It's such a pleasure to have you here. It's my pleasure, pleasure, and pleasure. Welcome back to Korea. It's, it's, it's been a crazy, crazy time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what brings you back to Korea this time? Well, I mean, uh, I came just to kind of, you know, visit uh, some friends, but also, mm -hmm. you know, do some shows, uh, make sure that the small amount of fans I have out here, you know, know that uh, I'm still kicking. So, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's so great to have you here. I know that you recently did a show here in Seoul mm -hmm. and also in Busan. Mm -hmm. So what was that like? You know, it was weird because the shows in Seoul, they're all, uh, they all Korean Americans or Korean comedians, mm -hmm. uh, c Korean c Canadians. Uh, and so their laughter, their reactions were like, <laughs> you know, like very not energetic. And mm -hmm. I hated that. But oh, no. uh, yeah, yeah, but the Busan <laughs> shows, they're all just, uh, they're mostly, um, you know, like, like white folks mm -hmm. from different parts of the world. And they understand comedy and they had a good time. So. I think they, everyone had a good time, hopefully. Yeah. But if not, then, oh well, they paid. <laughs> so. You got paid anyway, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it checks in my pocket, whatever. <laughs> so. Too funny. <laughs> well, you know, you, you're a little too humble. You have quite a following, uh, not only here in Korea, but back stateside. You've got your internet uh, sh show. Mm -hmm. You've got the K-Town Cowboys. You've got the podcast, mm -hmm. the F. Uh, it yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> can't say it yeah, on the yeah. television. It's a podcast. Search Danny Cho on iTunes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of people just love your kind of irreverent style of comedy. <laughs> I don't know if irreverent is the right word to no? describe it. I'm just going to call it uh, I'm a dirty man. <laughs> I'm a filthy man. I just say whatever <laughs> I want to say. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think comedy, it, it's, it's not... Comedy is something that you should just whatever you are, you know, like whatever your style is, mm -hmm. you know, there's some, the like Koreans here, they, they have a lot of slapstick stuff, you know, and yes. it, to me, it, it feels like Three Stooges, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, in and Korea, so, they call it like kegu, right? Yeah, mum kegu, you yes. know, and so I'm like, when I see that, I'm like, that's not my style. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's funny sometimes, but, you know, that's not me. I'm just the guy that likes to tell whatever's on my mind, you know. So, you know, if you can educate uh, most of us who may not be familiar with the kind of theory behind comedy or mm -hmm. the different types of comedy, you mentioned earlier the Korean style of slapstick, mm -hmm. and you're a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. um, and you do so many more things aside from being a comedian. Can you educate us on what types of comedy are out there and what you do specifically? Well, I mean, what I do specifically is stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's um, you know, the Korean culture, do they don't, really have it i mean they have a talk concert you know mm -hmm. that you know which is kind of like a stand-up comedy mm -hmm. so it's a, you know it's a monologue it's a monologist that can get up on stage mm -hmm. and whether it's one-liner jokes you know whether it's um like a story mm -hmm. whether it's a speech whether it's a political point but there's also physical comics mm -hmm. stand-up comics mm -hmm. that move around and you know what i mean and so it's just a real show mm -hmm. with one dude and one mic you know what I mean? And, and, and that's what stand-up comedy is. Um, you know, but then there is, you know, like slapstick. There's like uh, um, improv. You know, mm -hmm. improv is, you know, usually as a group of, as a troupe. Mm -hmm. And then you get 
um, you know, they, they try to quote unquote, you know, think of stuff on the spot, you know, mm-hmm. and some, but I'm going to be honest, not all of it's, you know, really off the top of the head, but yeah. you know, a lot of it is. Mm-hmm. And so it's more, that's more of an acting base, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, those are the three I can really think of in terms of uh, per- performance wise. You know? And uh, you feel most comfortable with stand-up comedy? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think a few people might have been wondering, how is Susan going to be able to interview Danny and keep it clean enough for broadcasting? Because you're not known for being necessarily, you know, PG-13. I'm not, definitely. Right? Yeah. So, you know, it's an over 19 crowd, uh, over 18 crowd. Mm-hmm. And uh, I can I can I ask you to kind of behave today during the interview? I will. I yeah. will. I will. They they said, uh, Danny, you know, be 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 good. And you know, <laughs> I know I'm familiar with the Adidang folks, and mm-hmm. so um, I'm gonna chamo. I'm gonna hold it in. You awesome. Know what I mean? But I'll be funny. I try to be funny. <laughs> you you always are. Yeah. And I think that what's great about you, Danny, and I've been a fan of yours for a while now, is that uh, you have kind of a, a message behind what you what you joke about Mm -hmm. and it's not just about the filth and the offensive jokes and that's your method it seems to kind of get your point across no well i mean you know that's that's the stuff the comics that i really respect Mm -hmm. um they always had a point Mm -hmm. you know and you know my sister in the beginning she was like oh but you're so dirty on stage right now and i said okay grace i want you to uh strip out all the bad words Mm -hmm. i want you to strip out all the dirty things i talk about and really try to understand what I'm trying to say in some of these jokes. I mean, some of them are just dirty for the sake of being dirty. I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend like it's something smart, but um, ultimately I think, you know, whatever the point is, uh, you know, whether or not you disagree with or not, I feel like I can, it's, it's something that I wanna do, you know, mm-hmm. and it's something that uh, I don't wanna be a preacher, you know, but I have a message. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been a comedian and why did you choose stand up? Well, I mean, you know, uh, there's two answers for that. The first time I did stand-up was in the summer of 2000. Okay. And that's what, 13 years now, right? And that was when you were how old? I was uh, 18. Wow. Yeah. Very young. Yeah. Uh, what happened was I got, um, I got dared by a friend. Mm-hmm. And they were like, hey, you're funny, but we can't do it on stage. And you know when you're 18 mm-hmm. and you're a guy and your hormones are like just riled Well, up. I wouldn't know because I'm not a guy. But, but you have <laughs> but hormones. You have yeah. hormones, right? <laughs> yes. Like you'd be like, hey, you see that guy? Why don't you go hit on him? Hmm. I bet you can't hit on him. You, you know, I bet you can't um, seduce him. I mm-hmm. bet you'd be like, Shh, girl, right? right? right. Exactly, yeah. uh, you know, so I did that and I was like, all right, you pick a spot. Mm-hmm. I'll go up on stage. And uh, I picked up a spot. It was an open mic night mm-hmm. in, uh, in the hood. And it was funny because I was planning to do like jokes. Okay. And when I got on stage, uh, uh, a lady in the front uh, of African American <laughs> descent mm-hmm. was like, "Oh, he Chinese. You know, he ain't funny, right?" That's what he said to me. You know, oh. yeah, and so I made fun of her for twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, I just really just made fun of her yeah. appearance, her style, mm-hmm. her fashion, everything. And uh, and everyone well, else laughed. Everyone was dying. They were like, "Wow, this guy is crazy." And, and what did she say? And she couldn't say anything because everyone was just laughing. You know what I mean? And like, mm. you know, because you know, she had like really ashy knees. Oh. You know what I mean? And she was like, how dare you wear a skirt with ashy knees? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. look like you were on a chalkboard. So, so yeah. for people who may not know what ashy knees are, yeah. it's just like dry knees. Yeah, yeah. Really like, dry. like, you know, if you don't dry wear skin. lotion and you go like this, Mm-hmm. And you see your fingernail marks, mm-hmm. you ashy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, but you know, yeah, she, uh, she was very ashy. Mm-hmm. And I just made fun of her, her teeth, her hairstyle, her body. Mm-hmm. I just, just totally just deconstructed her. And, um, ouch. And, uh, I long, wouldn't want to be your enemy. I know, that's why you better be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I talking am. about I'm all trying. sparkly I mean, stuff right now. <laughs> anyway. It's just for you. <laughs> oh, girl. Mm. It's sexy. Now, uh, so what happened was, uh, long story short, I, uh, I won, it, there was a contest, I won the, the prize. Wow, uh, yeah, congratulations. Thank you, and uh, it, I got bit by the comedy bug. Mm. And so, throughout college, mm-hmm. uh, I was doing stand-up, but it wasn't a full-time gig, you know, mm-hmm. it was kind of like, oh, you know, like, oh, I'm having an open mic night here, or mm-hmm. I got a gig at the comedy club, I gotta mm-hmm. go there, and uh, yeah, that's how it started. But the, the next answer is, I don't believe you can call yourself 
something unless that pays the bills. Mm. Unless that's your main job. Yes, yes. Uh. You know, because there's people that are, oh, I'm an actor, but then they're a waiter <laughs> to pay the bills. And you're a waiter, dude. You're not an actor. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, uh, so I quit my job. Um, mm -hmm. I used to be a business consultant mm -hmm. after college, and mm -hmm. then uh, I quit in 2006. Wow. So then till now, I've been doing stand up full time. I'm glad you have done that for the past you know, number of years because yeah. the world would be minus one really funny guy. That's sweet of you. Uh, <laughs> a lot of I have I have some uh, what do you call it anti fans that mm -hmm. that uh, would say otherwise, yeah. you know, and which is which is fine. Yeah, I'm sure I have them too, but yeah. you know, not our, you can't please everyone. Yeah, I don't I don't no. care if yeah. they don't like me. Or not. <laughs> yeah. A Korean American stand up comedian who's funny, smart, and candid. Danny Cho. This is so bad. You know what a una is? A una is when you see a girl from afar and you're like, ooh, but when you're close, you're like, nah. <laughs> and there's a lot of unas in, in, in Itaewon, man. In Korea, for example. I was in, um, I was at uh, Karosugil, you know? And I saw some girls. They look like plastic face monsters, you know? And um, I look at them, and, you know, they were, they were cute. They had that. that you know, they had the, 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 cute, the cute walk, and they were walking, and we saw a Porsche 911 pass by. And one of them looked to her friend and was like, ah, <laughs> And I'm like, you're walking, stupid. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, you're walking, really? Really? Well, I hope you kill yourself. You How know? do you maintain that type of confidence that you need to keep yourself going? I mean, I imagine that it can be a really vulnerable thing to be on stage mm -hmm. and to you know, say these jokes. You've got some people laughing, you've got some people criticizing mm -hmm. you. And this is for any co comedian, not mm -hmm. just you. Um, how do you maintain that, that assuredness that can keep you going? Don't do it for anybody else but you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, again, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna work for laughs, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. then do it because, be you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Don't be someone else, but be you, mm -hmm. be yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you have the fortitude and you have the understanding that you are talented mm -hmm. or you are funny, mm -hmm. um, then that's it. Have you had people walk out on you? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know what? That's, that's fine. You know what I mean? In the beginning, it hurt. You know, I want everyone to love me. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you did it because, you know, you wanted the attention. You wanted the, the fans to be, or the, the audience members to be like, hey, this guy's funny. But at this point, you know, I, I accept the fact that, that you can't please everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that's where I'm at. I'm, mm -hmm. You know, like, I can alter it as much as I can, but ultimately, I'm not doing it for the audience members. Mm -hmm. I'm, doing do it for? It, I'm doing it for me. You know, it's a very selfish way to think about it, but I love stand-up to a point where um, it's kind of like therapy for me. You know, mm. most people pay money. Mm -hmm. Well, these are my problems. You know, I have girlfriend problems or whatever, but I talk about my girlfriend problems on stage. <laughs> and you get paid for it. Yeah. So you get paid for your therapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad business to be in. Yeah. <laughs> and I like to talk, you know, and I have a lot of, you know, things about life that I don't like mm -hmm. and people that I don't like mm -hmm. or things, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like people when they do dumb, dumb things, you know, mm -hmm. but everyone kind of looks past it. I'm like, why are we looking past this? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm curious uh, what the main topics of your kind of routine consist of. Um, I mean, I've been to your show before mm. and I've seen you a lot on YouTube and mm. whatnot, but for those that may not be familiar with your work, what are the main topics? Well, you know, I, I wouldn't say that I have specific topics, you know, like whatever I find funny. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's some, there's some times I'd be like, oh, dude, I hate certain people. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'll write about it. You know what I mean? Like, when, you know, in uh, social media, mm -hmm. like Facebook, you know, and there's, there's girls that put pictures, uh, self, self, or selka pictures, mm -hmm. and be like, I know I look ugly in this, but dot, 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 dot. <laughs> and then all her dumb friends go, oh, you're gorgeous, right? Because they want the attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that just makes me insane. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just drives me crazy. To Danny Cho, the stage isn't just a place to perform jokes. For him, it's a refuge, therapy session, and workplace rolled up all into one. <laughs> a 
comedians <laughs> are, in my opinion, um, I think you have to be kind of smart to be a stand-up comic. I agree yeah. with that. You have to be so quick, right? right? Now, a friend has a joke about this, and I'm not going to ruin the joke, but basically he's saying that smart people are the most mad people. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mad as an angry or angry crazy? Angry and just depressed and mm. crazy. Mm. As, and dumb people are actually happy. Do you know what I mean? Imagine you if figure? you, okay, uh, think about it. If, if you learn something that amazed you every day, mm -hmm. then you'd always be happy. Because you're dumb, mm -hmm. you don't know anything, and be like, oh, one plus one is two? What? <laughs> awesome, right? But then the smart person's like, it's too stupid. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so it's always, you have a negative kind of, mm. kind of, uh, you know. I think thing. I'm dumb then. Because <laughs> I, I tend to be pretty I happy. I didn't say it. <laughs> Agree with it. <laughs> I'm not, you're you're a genius. Yeah, yeah. You're a genius to 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 have an interview with me. <laughs> with, you know, with with you look gracious. I don't know. I Hi. think you should be the star. I don't know why you interview. I look like look at. I didn't even iron. <laughs> I didn't even iron today. I was like, what? <laughs> Two bucks to iron? I just shit you crazy. <laughs> so I said, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So. Smart people tend to be depressed, in your opinion. I mean, I think com m most comics are depressed. Mm. You know what I mean? And you know what? The thing about what, what people think is that the job itself is to be on stage and be funny, mm -hmm. which is cool, mm -hmm. right? But they don't understand the other aspects of it. Like, if I'm traveling, mm -hmm. you know, like in Korean style, you have, even if you're a, if you're a solo artist, mm -hmm. you have a driver, you have a manager, you have a stylist, mm -hmm. you know, you have a team behind you yeah. that'll go to your show in the mm -hmm. middle of nowhere, in the shigors of Korea, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and perform for like five high monies, right? But for me, <laughs> I don't have all that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm traveling the US or the world or whatever, you know, by myself, mm -hmm. and you're in the middle of nowhere renting your car and you're driving and you're talking it gets it gets it gets tiring. It gets lonely. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And so um, it is a it is a more depressing. You know what I'm so saying. So how do you deal with the loneliness or the stress or the depression? Am I to assume that you're also saying that sometimes you're depressed? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, that's the thing. Is that, you know when people always want to find happiness, right? Mm -hmm. Like in my mind, the reason why people can't find happiness is because one, they want it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to be happy all the time. Right. And two, it's a lot of people have these checklists of mm -hmm. what make will make them happy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I want to make this much money. I want to have this job. I want to have this house. I want to mm. have this friends. I want my wife to look like this, mm. cook like this, blah, 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 blah. Even if you hit it all, you're not going to be happy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for me, I have to take a step back and be like, look, I'm doing something that a lot of people will kill to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's true. You know, and, and be, you know, I don't I'm not famous or whatever. I don't have a crazy resume, but I know a lot of comics that aren't even close to my resume, which isn't even that good. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So instead Too of humble. Yeah, well, it's not that good, trust <laughs> me. But if you instead of looking at the end goal, mm -hmm. I mean you should have an end goal, but instead of looking at the end goal, I say Enjoy that ride. Mm. You know what I mean? Just look around and be like, hey, mm. it can be worse. While a comedian like him is funny on and off stage, he also has a serious side. He's had his shares of ups and downs, and that's why he tells people to simply enjoy the roller coaster ride that we call life. One drink. Okay. Five? Oh my god, five? Okay. Heavy drinker, oh my god, heavy drinker. Whoa. You know, I really am curious about how it is that you have that kind of keen eye to take from whatever situation what's funny. Um, was this something that you were born with? Like, is there someone in your family that's really funny or really direct? Uh, did you see some potential uh, as, you, as you were you know, growing up as a comedian? Or? I think my mom, she yeah. was, she was uh, she's a funny lady, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, Every time I call her, um, she always makes me laugh. But you know, it's, it's not that we laugh together. I, most mm -hmm. of the time, I laugh at her, <laughs> <laughs> what she says. Like recently, she called me, uh, uh, or I called her mm -hmm. when I was out here, and I said, uh, "Mom, you know, I'm gonna be back soon." And she goes, "You know, well, in Korea." And she said, "Well, you should hurry up and find a wife over in Korea." And I was <laughs> like, "Well, a lot of these girls, uh, they're gold diggers." You know, and then she goes, okay, then make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> right. Instead of going, Click. instead of going, find 
the girl that is not a gold digger, mm -hmm. she's like, I'm gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> That's what she told me. And I was like, thanks for the support, mom. <laughs> she's like, who would, who would marry you for your looks? Stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Aww. <laughs> Don't awe me. Come on. This is not a fall in love with face or body. Aww. You know, I'm aware of that. Changing topics a little <laughs> bit. What's your most memorable show so far? You know, most, uh, you know, I, I would say that a lot of shows that I've done, there's a lot, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. from doing shows for army bases and, you know, mm. like I made a, um, a promise to a few friends that, um, you know, fought in the war mm -hmm. and some of them didn't come back. You know, they, they died in the war mm, so and they sorry. all, ah, I mean, it's, it's sad, but, you know, it happened, you know, and so to them, I, you know, before they left, they promised me, if you have a chance uh, to perform, you should, you know, mm -hmm. come out. And I was like, yeah, of course. And I realized that when I talked to the soldiers on these bases, mm -hmm. this is a stress that, you know, like everyone goes, oh, I'm stressed out. You know what I mean? All the camera people and all the directors mm -hmm. and editors, oh, I'm stressed out because I can't, you know, make this sync right. But that's a different type of stress to am I going to get shot and die today? Stress. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so for those soldiers, that's what they have to think about every day is that is today my last day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so with all that kind of stress, you know, I figure at least for an hour or two hours that I'm out there mm -hmm. to do a show, um, that'll give them a taste of home. That'll make mm -hmm. them forget about, uh oh, this dude right here might be strapped with the life vest filled with bombs. You know what I mean? And so you know, I think, I think it's something, it's not like I'm changing the world or whatever, but if I can and I can help mm -hmm. just a little bit doing what I do, mm -hmm. of course I'll do it, you know, you know. So do you try to get a layout of the types of people that are coming to your show or do you just normally have a set routine and you just kind of go with it? Uh, I usually kind of just like sit like and, you know, outside because, you know, people don't know who I am most of the time. So I just kind of look, you know, mm -hmm. and be like, okay. It's these types of people mm. that go in. And I don't really have like a, 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 an order, mm. you know, so, mm -hmm. yeah. I imagine that not all audiences are created equally. And um, once you gauge the audience, um, I'm wondering if you kind of alter your jokes to make more of a point or drill a, a message home even more? Well, you know, I think what, what um, people fail to understand is that Comedy is very subjective. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, you and I might have very different tastes in comedy. You, mm -hmm. your, your favorite sitcom might be completely different from mine, right? Mm -hmm. Give, same thing with stand-up comedy. Let's say there's uh, 150 people here, right? Not all of them are going to like Mm. what I'm going to say. You know, it's not easy to please everyone. You can't make everyone happy. But you've made enough people happy to get onto commercials and other kinds of television. So, so tell me about how it is that you became slightly more well-known and popular. Well, you know what? Uh, there's a, uh, a comedian. He's kind of like my, my, my older brother mm -hmm. in this business. Um, the Koreans call them sambas, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, his name is Bobby Lee. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a comedian. He was on Mad TV and many movies. Oh, yeah. And Bobby, he looked at me and he goes, Danny, there's two types of people that get on TV. Really good looking people and dudes that look like mutants. <laughs> and you look like a mutant. Oh my gosh, right. that's and I was, harsh. And I was like, thanks. And uh, so he, uh, he called me for a set, uh, uh, a sh uh, episode of Mad TV mm -hmm. and for a sketch. And he goes, Danny, I need someone fat and dumb looking. And I was like, okay, what time you need me there? <laughs> so, so I went and, you know, I went and we were, you know, we were hanging outside during mm -hmm. break time. He goes, hey, you have an agent? And I was like, no. So he called the commercial agent, mm -hmm. his friend, and he goes, he goes, hey, we got this guy, he's got a big face, he's fat, but he's like weirdly agile looking, you know? And so... Weirdly he, agile? He, yeah, so I went to um, the offices and mm -hmm. I didn't have headshots, I didn't have anything. Mm -hmm. And the agent went, you're perfect. And so, oh you know, I mean, yeah, so I went in and... Uh, within six months, I booked my first national commercial. Uh, uh, what was that? It was uh, a Super Bowl commercial for um, for a beer company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, it was it was weird. You know what I mean? Like I, the first commercial I got, and Super Bowl. I, like yeah. that's the most heavily watched mm -hmm. show at any given point, and the commercials are the most watched. Yeah, the highlights. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, wow. and so I mean, you know, companies pay like two, three million dollars to put mm -hmm. one commercial on. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl, mm -hmm. you know, like 
time slot. So. so did you make bank on that commercial? Oh, I got I got girls coming to me. <laughs> oh, wow, you're so famous. Can I get dinner, Papa Sancho? Right. So, you know, I had to weed out the uh, gold diggers. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so after that commercial, what other commercials did you do? Um, I've done uh, commercials for uh, cell phone company like Sprint, mm -hmm. T-Mobile. I've done Bank of America commercials. Mm -hmm. I've done a uh, State Farm commercial, mm -hmm. um, NFL Network. Um, I've done a handful, you know. And so, what would they have you do? Were you were you supposed to be the funny guy? Were you supposed to be the the mutant guy, as you said earlier? Or I think I, you know, legitimately, I uh, I am funny looking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's like okay. There was one commercial that I that I uh, auditioned, mm -hmm. right? It was for GoDaddy, and GoDaddy, yeah. you know, they the website they, they, website company, thing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And they go, "Can you stick your stomach in, and then stick it out?" <laughs> that was my audition, right? <laughs> and I went, "Really?" And I was like, "Yeah." So I stuck it in, mm -hmm. and I stuck it out, and the person was like, "Perfect." <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was like, "Yo, they they gave me money for that." For, wow. Yeah. So so you know, thank you. <laughs> don't no, don't tell me too much, but so because <laughs> so, of my stomach. So. In the U.S., he's not only famous as a stand-up comedian. He has appeared in a number of TV commercials and owes his success to his unique appearance. Danny, it seems like you were kind of born to be a comedian. When did you realize that this is your path? Or maybe I should ask you, did you see yourself as a child being really funny? Like, did you get any good reactions from your family? Uh, one, there was one story where um, when I was about three, mm. and uh, you, see, you see this forehead? Like, mm -hmm. the start of the forehead, that was since birth. <laughs> In the middle, that's missing. That's stress and that's bad living. But, but I've always had a big forehead, right? Yeah. And, and my um, my my como, my aunt, mm -hmm. she was like, she was always like, oh no, you know, you're gonna be bald, you know, not right? Mm. And my aunt, she had really bad acne scars. Mm. And at three, I looked at her and I said, "고모는 하느님이 포크가 걸고 찔른 거 같아요." Right? And she got really shocked because a three-year-old just 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 dissed her really bad, oh, right? Oh no! And so my parents whooped me. She they, they just whooped me. Mm -hmm. And then on the way back home, my dad looked back and was like, "Chat us up," right? And I was like, "Come with that, right? Why did you hit me, right?" But um, but at, then I knew that it wasn't really comedy. It was that mm -hmm. I was really good at um, offending people. Mm. And I think that's what uh got me by all the way through here is that um, I'm good at offending people if I wanted to. Yeah. You know? and I so you're a natural at it. I'm naturally a bad person. <laughs> yeah. So at a young age, you knew that you had a quick wit mm -hmm. and were able to, as you say, be offensive, but mm -hmm. be funny also. And you also were quite talented a number of things. You were a good student. You did Taekwondo, right? So. Tell me about the, the martial arts aspect. Is that something that you really did, or are you saying that to be funny now? Um, I was amazing. Really? <laughs> you know, you know what it is is that um, I, uh, given that I grew up in a really rough neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, and when I was a kid, I saw Bruce Lee movies. Mm. You know what I mean? And I was like, I want to be that guy because that guy is cool. Mm. You know, that guy kind of looks like me, and he's cool, and nobody messes with him. And, you know, my neighbor's bad, and I got into fights all the time as a kid. And so uh, my parents enrolled me to do Taekwondo when I was four. And Young age. I didn't stop till I was 22. Really? Yeah. Wow. And so... Why did you stop? Well, I mean, I got into a car accident, and I couldn't um, I really compete anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what I mean? Like, the, the reason why I did it for so long is because... Uh, at first, it was kind of like I wanted to be Bruce Lee, mm -hmm. and then it became boring, really, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to do it. But my dad was like, you know, well, Korean, he, he said, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So meaning, like, don't give up, right, mm -hmm. until you see to, to the very end of it, you know? And so my goal was to, uh, uh, you know, go to nationals and mm -hmm. win, and, uh, and, and, and I won, and I won nationals. And uh, so, you awesome. know, I, I kind of, uh, well, I was awesome, <laughs> and then uh, I got in a car accident, mm -hmm. and uh, doctor said you shouldn't be, able, you shouldn't really compete anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, the reason why I stopped 
like doing taekwondo was because the competition was fun mm. and it was not really to beat other people mm -hmm. but it was the um, like the physical aspect of it, it was a mental game. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, if I do this move, then this guy's gonna do that move, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna counter with that move. And it was like mental chess, and that's what I like it. And that's why I still, when I watch boxing or mm -hmm. I watch MMA, mm -hmm. people see the brutality, oh, look at that knockout, that's a crazy knockout. But for me, I always see it as, oh, there's that opening, he mm -hmm. shouldn't have opened it, he shouldn't have, you know, whatever, so. So you see it from a kind of strategic point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's why that's why it's so you know interesting to me. And and I don't, not only did I do taekwondo, I did um, judo, jujitsu, uh, um, hapkido, and kendo. So, what degrees were you of of these different disciplines? Uh, I was a fourth degree black belt wow. in taekwondo, uh, third degree in uh, hapkido, mm -hmm. uh, first degree in kendo, first degree in jujitsu ju ju and judo. If I may be um, a little blunt here. Yeah. You don't necessarily look like someone who yeah. did martial arts. Uh, you know, <laughs> when, <laughs> I, when I told Bobby that, oh, I was like, Bobby. I wasn't sure if you were yeah. actually kidding yeah. that you actually did Taekwondo no. because. I beat everybody in this room, <laughs> for sure, <laughs> girls included. Mm. No, no, no. But uh, what, what it is is that um, uh, after the car accident, I mm -hmm. actually, you know, like when you, when you work out and you know, you work out hard and train hard, like you eat a lot because you mm -hmm. burn a lot of calories. Yeah. Well, I stopped training. But I ate the same way. Ah. You know what I'm saying? So um, I actually gained uh, 100 pounds <gasps> in four years. Oh, my goodness. Was that 45 kilos Okay. There. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I ballooned up. Wow. You went down the path of doing, you know, college studies and whatnot. But mm -hmm. from what I understand, you got into some pretty great you know, Ivy League schools, but you chose to stay in Los Angeles and mm -hmm. go to US UCLA. Why is that? Um, I'm a guy, and first, most important thing is uh, girls, mm. right? And at the time, at the, all the colleges I got accepted to, UCLA had the prettiest girls. Mm. You know what I mean? You know why? I, I mean, are you serious? You really went to UCLA just because of the pretty girls of there? Of course. God is fair, <laughs> right? If you're way too smart, then the other thing, eh, right? So, um, but... On, on top of that, it's, you know, it's in L.A., mm -hmm. so, you know, friends and family, Hollywood, mm -hmm. um, what else is there? Uh, food, weather. When you were at UCLA, you majored in economics, is that right? Yes. Okay. And why did you decide to major in economics? Well, um, like every Korean uh, parent, my mom wanted me to be a doctor. Mm. So, I, uh, so I went in pre-med. Okay. And uh, after three years, I real or two years of it, I realized I don't want to study anymore. You know, uh, mm -hmm. like really, like it, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, you have you're you're out of debt at 45. You know what I mean? That doesn't make sense to me, right? So I said, okay, mom, I'm not gonna do that. Mm -hmm. And my mom was like, why are you not doing well in school? And I mm -hmm. said, no, I'm actually I'm getting a 4.0. But wow. it's because I'm a really good cheater, <laughs> and so <laughs> I would flirt with the ugly girls in school. Yeah. In the class. Yeah. You know, because they they're in the one in the front, no to touch up, <laughs> right? So um uh. So I decided to go to pre-law, mm -hmm. and then I was like, wow, this is a lot of reading. Mm. You know, I don't want to read that much. So I, so I decided to do, um, you know, the closest thing to business, mm -hmm. and that was economics and okay. accounting. So. And then from, from UCLA, you went straight, not into comedy, but mm -hmm. you went into a consulting gig, is that right? Yeah, I worked, uh, did valuation consulting. And, okay. uh, I mean, I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to imagine you working uh, in a suit, uh, going at you know seven or eight in the morning, mm -hmm. working you know super long hours yeah. as a consultant. I mean, that's just a really hard thing to kind of picture in my head, looking at you now. Honestly, like I enjoyed the work. You know, it was mm -hmm. really cool. To, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I worked on a lot of cool projects. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked on the singular AT and T merger back home, and mm -hmm. so I got to stay, you know, in in, in Seattle for the summer, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I had a great I had a great time. with great coworkers, mm -hmm. but. I realized that uh, if I didn't do stand-up, like mm -hmm. if I didn't go full-time, I would never know how it feels. Mm. And, and this is a niche I needed to scratch. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be 40 with my kids going, Daddy, isn't he funny? Mm. And I'd be like, no, not you know, really. It takes a lot of guts to switch careers like that. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a drastic change. It's not going from consulting to, I don't know, you know, management consulting, mm -hmm. right? Like you didn't choose the business school route and think about what you're going to do with your life. You went to a completely different field. Yeah. Um, are you ever regretting that decision that you made? You know, I mean, 
if I say I didn't regret it, that'd be a lie. Mm. Uh, you know, because, you know, like, sometimes you, you as a human being, there's, there's, there's a bit of stability that you miss. In this business, you're not, you're not stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went from making six figures a year to the first month when I quit my job, I made $60. It was a shock, and it was a, it was you know like if I if I if you can't think like this, but I can always think like if I still had that job mm -hmm. with all the raises and bonuses, mm -hmm. I'd be at least making half a million dollars a year. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I'm not, mm. you know. And so, but again, money isn't everything, but it really does help. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like like oh, money isn't everything, but really. Do you really? Lamin doesn't taste good all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like sometimes but, you want steak. But you're not eating ramen every day. Of course not. But I mean, maybe in the beginning mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. you're getting started. But there's there's one time where I was so hungry and I had nothing in the house, and I looked at the fridge and there I saw ice cubes. Mm. And I looked in the bottom of the fridge and I saw some bread. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had an ice cube sandwich? I can't say that I have no. But that, that's what I had. I had before because I was I was like that poor. Wow. You know what I mean? Like doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. And I'm you know I'm I'm a guy and I have the pride. I'm not gonna be like, well, mom and dad, please help me out. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Because if I did, then they'd be like, you stupid. Why did you quit your job, mm -hmm. idiot? Right? So I don't want to hear that because Korean moms are the world professionals at nagging. Mm. Oh, I. You know what I'm saying? Know. They are the best. At nagging. Yeah, I mean, I love my mom too. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's yeah. that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> when mean, are you getting married? How come you're so fat? How come you're so short? How you shave? Your hair falling apart. I was like, whoa, hi, happy Mother's Day, mom. <laughs> <laughs> you must have gotten a lot of uh, grief from your mom when you quit your job at consulting. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, did. how did you handle that? How did I handle it? Mm -hmm. You know what I told my parents is this: is that they came to the United States in the late '70s, and they busted their tails off to make sure that my sister and I get to do what they that what makes us happy. Mm -hmm. Now their belief is that stability mm -hmm. and money equals happiness. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no. Mm. Happiness is something else. Mm. And I'm doing what I'm doing and it makes me happy. Mm. And ultimately you succeeded in completing your goal. Mm -hmm. You know? And I know you're worried. But honestly, you can be 50, and if your mom's still alive, you're still your mom's little baby, right? Yeah. And so yeah. they're not going to change that. Mm -hmm. But I just, I just take it with, uh, as it's because they love us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. What do your parents think now? I mean, have you asked your parents? Oh, they still hate it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My mom, my mom can see this and be like, yeah. we got the thoughts on? No way, dude. Be, <laughs> heck no, dude. No way. They'll just be like, Tony not there. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's what my mom thinks. It, is, it, is it, to her, it's like she sees my life and it's not stable. Mm. One day, he decided to quit his job that brought him financial stability in order to pursue his passion, comedy. Although this meant he'd sometimes struggle to make ends meet, he has had no regrets because he's living his dream. Why do you continue to pursue comedy? Um, because I, I love it. Because I like it. I love and like. It's the same thing, really. You know <laughs> what I mean? Uh, well, like is like is the first three months of a relationship, right? Mm. Like is, I like to be around this person mm -hmm. all the time. Her stories are fantastic. She smells nice. She always looks nice. Love is after three months, mm. right? When you don't always want to be next to her. She doesn't always look nice, right? She doesn't always, you know, she's not always sweet, mm. but you have to stay because you have to be selfless mm. because you love her, mm. right? Mm. So you know what I mean? Like when people go, oh, pe it's good to be in love. No, it's not. It's not. Why do because you Because being selfless is going, oh, I got to do this because I have to, mm. because I love her, mm. right? Mm. No guy wants to buy her do chick flowers. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I love her and I want to make this girl smile because mm. if not, she's going to give me hell. 
So that's love, you know what I mean? And that's how you feel about comedy? Yeah, meaning, meaning that I'm willing to give everything I got. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to die on stage if I have to for this art because mm -hmm. I love it. Danny, do you plan on being a stand-up comedian for the rest of your life or do you have some other plans as well? I want to be doing stand-up for the rest of my life. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's my first love, you know, and you can't quit your first love, you know. Mm. Uh, but, you know, that's not all I want to do. Mm. I think ultimately, you know, I want to get involved in, in the creation aspect of it in terms of producing, mm -hmm. writing, mm -hmm. and, you know, I've been doing a little bit of that with the K-Town Cowboys series yeah. and stuff like that. So. You know what, ultimately what I love about what I do is the creation and the seeing of that creation unfold, whether mm -hmm. it's through a joke, a movie, a YouTube skit, yep. you know, a podcast, whatever it mm -hmm. is, so, yeah. And I hear that you are involved in a film project as a writer, am I right? Yeah, um, actually, uh, well, three years ago I did a webisode series called K-Town Cowboys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's a story about a, guy, a bunch of guys being guys. Mm -hmm. And it was played by my, my friends mm -hmm. uh, who are actors or in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. And so it, it did better than we thought it would. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, now uh, we're gearing up to do a feature film, K-Town Cowboys. Brand new story. Um, crazier cameos yeah. and um, it's gonna be a fun and I wrote it and um, wow so you wrote the the screenplay for mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. so it's all done and is it just ready to be produced now it's ready to we're ready to you know um, go through pre-production real soon so so what are the steps involved now um, to get it kind of out there well I mean you know we got to get the locations we got to finish up the casting uh, make sure that all the equipment mm -hmm. you know, what kind of camera we really want to shoot it on yeah. you know um, and then from there, uh, we shoot. Huh. And then the post-production was going to take forever. <laughs> and then, uh, so, I mean, it, when it comes out, it really depends on uh, what route we take it. If somebody, if a studio distribution company picks it up right away, then mm -hmm. it's going to be right away. Or we might just do the film festival route. We're really kind of just, you know, weighing our options. Can you give us a little preview of what might be uh, part of the, the film? I mean, is it going to be similar to the K-Town Cowboys? Is it going to be something a little bit different with the same cast? Um, the cast is going to be pretty, uh, except for the exception of the guy in, in the webisode series, um, somebody came to visit. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a prequel, but not really. Mm -hmm. So the guy is not in the picture. It's okay. the cousin that's there, and who used to be a group, you know, within the group. Okay. And uh, it's really a story about a bunch of guys that have their own, you know, ordeals and problems and they have to deal with growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can't party and play forever. And who you know? do you play? I play uh, a character named Danny, <laughs> who was a stand-up comedian. Really? Who was That's struggling. so out of your realm. I'm not creative. <laughs> so I just like write kind of, you know, like based on my life. You yeah. Know I mean? So, um, you know, it's, it's a, it's really a story about, you know, a group of friends who do a lot of things. There's one guy that's a liquor store owner who's really a liquor store owner, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And there's one who's a musician and one who's a, trying to be an actor and one's trying to be a designer. Mm -hmm. But that the job itself is not important, really. It's, it's the idea of going, hey, we can't be these kind of idiot playboys, you know what I mean, that try to like hit on girls all the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, we got to grow up, you know? We got to face the facts and, and be responsible. Mm -hmm. And um, the antics of us trying to get to that conclusion mm. is, is what makes the movie. As a comedian mm -hmm. who's turning into a writer, mm -hmm. may I also say director? Will you be directing this film? I will not be directing okay. this film. Okay, so yeah. just a comedian mm -hmm. turned writer. Mm -hmm. Do you find that that's kind of expansive for what you're doing uh, going forward? I think that's the next, uh, you know, I mean, as a comedian, you write your own jokes, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's in your head or on paper. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, as a writer, there's a lot more things that, that are involved in terms mm -hmm. of um, story arc yep. and um, character arc mm -hmm. in terms of drama, in terms of comedy. Mm -hmm. You can't have like a bunch of funny scenes, you know, and then that, that wouldn't be a movie. Mm -hmm. That would just be, you know, just a sketch comedy show. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot more education and a lot more like things that I need to, you know, learn. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. and, but. Obviously, it's it's a, it's a next step mm -hmm. into into uh, expanding my skill mm -hmm. sets. Yeah. Hey guys, check the spot, man. Go ahead up.
The witty and creative comedian and writer Danny Cho is a multifaceted entertainer who's still thirsty for more. He's endlessly taking on new challenges and projects, never stopping for a second to reach the top. Yeah. And what does comedy mean to you? Comedy means pain plus time equals funny. Mm. You know, I think a lot of the greats, um, they take their pain of their life, uh, of, of, of trauma. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One of, the, one of the greatest of all time, Richard Pryor. Mm. You know what I mean? He has been through a lot. He went through a lot in mm -hmm. his life. You know what I mean? Um, you know, he, he fell asleep on a crack pipe and gave himself, you know, second degree burns. Mm. You know, he had, you know, diseases, mental disease, you know, like his body took a toll on him, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, comedy is what he took all that, mm -hmm. all those experiences, all that painful stuff, mm -hmm. and he flipped it to make it funny, mm. you know, for, for the people to laugh, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel like, to me, the comics that I love are the people that really, really are vulnerable about their lives, about the, all the crazy stuff they've been through, all mm -hmm. the pain and hardships, mm -hmm. and they've kind of flipped it to make it funny, mm. so, yeah. Well, I hope that you don't have to go through a terrible, horrible experience like that mm. to, to show how funny you are and to entertain audiences, but to be able to turn a, a negative into mm -hmm. something that you can laugh about and also, like you said earlier, you yeah. know, make it therapy for yeah. you. I think yeah. that's really brilliant. Well, thank you. Yeah. I am brilliant. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Danny, if you had to give any aspiring comedian some advice about the business, about the craft itself, what would you say to them? I would say um, just because you're funny amongst your friends doesn't mean that you have chops to be a comedian. Mm. Uh, if you really want to be called a comedian, you should perform as much as you can, as often as you can. H have at least 50 shows under your belt before you can call yourself a comedian. You know what I mean? A stand-up comedian. Mm. Keep on writing. Keep on. And even if it's like a joke that you say over and over again, like every single time if you change it, you'll be able to, um, you know, hone it and, you know, always polish. Mm -hmm. And so just keep on getting on stage and keep on writing, you know? And, and I think uh, people will, um, if you're good enough, people will, you know, be like, oh, wow, this guy's funny or this girl's funny. Well, Danny, it's been really fun to interview you. And uh, I you. know I've laughed a lot during this interview. And uh, one thing that I can really say about having talked to you is that, you know, you're really real. Like you're kind of a genuine guy who, uh, just is who he is, and I respect that, that you're not just trying to be something just for people's sake, but that you are who you are, and you're making this career really work for you, and uh, I'm really proud of you as a you know, Korean-American to see someone who's pursuing his dreams and following his heart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being serious. Thank you, no, I'm, no seriously. I'm, no, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I, you know what, uh, you know, honestly, like, um, I know I do a lot of these interviews mm. and stuff, and and to, and at the end of the day, like I, even if I don't get famous, if I don't make money or whatever, if I die, knowing that I was being righteous, not not like not like godly or whatever, but being honestly me, mm -hmm. then there is there is no, I have no regrets, you know, and I, I feel like, um, you know, that's how everyone should live, really, mm -hmm. you know, and whatever they do, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, Thank you for, for saying that because most people think, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a clown or whatever, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm, I'm really serious. I'm not that funny. I don't, I don't know if this should really <laughs> go out in there. You know what I mean? What if this is the worst show I'm, I think I'm laughing of, too much. I'm trying to be really professional yeah. and not like laugh every right. time you say something, mm -hmm. but, you know, what can I say? Is that the words or the face? What is it? It's the whole package. <laughs> you said I'm ugly twice in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're ugly like several times. Yeah, but I can say that, but you can't. I didn't say you're ugly. I just used you're other the ways. An antithesis of good looking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. Thank you so much yeah. for being on my show. It's Love. been a pleasure.